Hey everyone. Welcome to our day 3 of the Kashmir trip. I think I have so many stories to share from those 7 magical days that it really becomes hard to choose one. Each and every day was unique and we kept falling a little more in love with the place as the trip progressed. So today we woke up to the stunning view of Habba Khatun mountains. The majestic mountain looks surreal behind the pink and orange sky. Usually while traveling I like to wake up early and explore the places before there is too much crowd outside and that is exactly what we did we quickly bundled up because the idea was to take a walk around the village and stepped out of the room there you can see our hotel in the distance the ambience around looked like a shade of blue because the sun had not risen yet And these are some of the houses of the villagers which were bang opposite to the entrance of our hotel. The first thing I noticed was that all the peaks around us were mostly covered in fresh snow. Even the mountains of Rajasthan Pass had more snow covered than what we had seen yesterday, which meant that last night there was considerable amount of snow. The snow covered peak that you see in the distance, that is the mountain where the india pakistan border is located we took a right and kept walking usually in the hills and mountains i've seen people wake up and start their day very early but here it was unusually calm and quiet around the homes as we walked past i think that made us enjoy the surroundings even more the only sound around us was the chirps of the birds That's the entrance to our hotel, and over there you can see our car parked. Just as we came around the bend of the road, we saw two local women picking something from the bushes behind the house. Those two were the first ladies we saw in the village. While we saw them, they also took notice of us. I smiled at them deliberately, whether it would be okay to speak to them or not, I was wondering. But they also smiled back. We started talking and the next thing they asked us was chalo ghar chalo chai piyo hamare ghar mein This was you know very unique that was just what we needed I was more than eager to visit their homes after all what can be a better opportunity to understand the local life up close than with a local The name of the woman who invited us to her home was Raja and she was very talkative and sweet Soon we came into a clearing. There was a large field in front of us, so everything looked like a freshly painted canvas washed by the rain from last night. And the fields looked more green, flanked by faraway mountains with the snow on top. The whole contrast of the grey and green looked very, very pretty. I noticed that the street lamp had small solar panels on them, which I felt was a very good move, considering the sun was very strong here. during the daytime and the night time uh, we had long hours of park so it was a very good move that the government had made raja was very chatty she was telling us which was which building we saw the mosque down the road probably the only lone mosque of the village we saw a couple of large buildings spread out along the fringes of the field raja told us that those were the primary and the secondary schools and the largest building we saw in front was a college we were so surprised and impressed at the same time to hear this to be very frank how many times have you seen all levels of educational institutions present in the same place in a small remote village of india this also proves that while based on the media reports we always carry an impression of kashmir as a backward place the real kashmir is much more focused on making education available for all Raja said it was very essential to have all levels of education right in the village so that the women in the village could also get higher levels of education without the need to leave their village. This also in turn proves that women education is deemed as a very important thing in the Kashmiri culture. 
In fact, I have read somewhere that the literacy rate in Gurez is around 99%. That itself shows how advanced the small hamlet is in their thought process. Frankly, within the first 15 minutes with these two women, we got to know so much about this village, this place, which made me really respect many things here in Kashmir. I stopped for a bit to look behind the trail which we had come so far. The few words that kept coming to my mind was majestic, surreal, out of the world beautiful. If we were staying more than two days in Gurez, I think I would have loved to come here and sit by the stream with a cup of kahwa every single morning when there was no one else. This would be the ideal spot for spending some me time among nature. Crooked fences made of wooden planks dotted the entrance to Raja's village. Narrow cemented path led us inside the cluster of log huts in the village. The wide stream now became narrow but still followed us along the pathway. The village looked really sleepy. We finally reached her house. It was a pakka house which meant they were a little more well off than some of the other homes we saw on the way. There was a huge tower right in front of our house. Raja told us it was the Geo Tower. Raja led us through the door which opened up into the kitchen. There was a seating come kitchen area. The seating area had a red wall to wall carpeting and there were some maroon colored pillows scattered. This was the area where women of the house cooked and talked to their family, friends and neighbors. In that small kitchen there was a mud chula for wood fire on the side. I guess that was used for cooking dishes on dam, which is very typical of Kashmiri cuisine. All her utensils were shining like silver. I do not have the faintest idea how one can keep their steel or aluminium ware looking this good. Soon the tea was ready and before serving, Raja rolled out a table runner on the floor in front of us and then placed a white porcelain cups with piping hot milk tea. She also placed a box in front of us which had four sections, each of it either had biscuits or some kind of namkeen stacks. And they were really yummy. Felt like a chai party with some friends. All ladies sitting together talking and enjoying the tea. We talked about so many things, the history of the village, Raja was telling us about her experience during the growing up years. There were instances when shells fired from the LOC would fall in this village also destroying the lives and property. It was hard to believe or visualize whatever she said going by the calmness and serenity we had experienced since we were in village. We sat there for some more time enjoying all her stories before we realized we were really gone for a long time from the hotel and they might be worried where we actually vanished to. So we thanked her for the tea and we said we'll come back again and left for our hotel. It took us about 10-15 minutes to be back to our hotel with occasional pit stops for capturing photos of course. We quickly made a pit stop at the hotel to learn that we still had some more time on our hands. So we thought, let us explore a bit more of this village. This time we went in the opposite direction. 
the one thing that you will keep noticing in kashmir be it in the city like srinagar or a village like gurez was the level of cleanliness the litter was almost close to none on the road and i would request all travelers who are coming to this region to be conscious travelers to not litter on the roads let's help keep the jannat the jannat always a little down the road we met two local women who again invited us for tea we smiled and thanked them but we had to politely decline their offer and move ahead As we kept walking in the distance we could hear the roar of the river And within the next 5 minutes we saw the first glimpse of the turquoise Krishna Ganga river I think the mountain rivers are the most gorgeous ones unpolluted crystal clear and with a very very strong current After a couple of minutes we reached the edge of the river which was covered in uneven stones and pebbles. The river looked pristine and the sunlight reflecting off its foaming waters. Far away we could see the signature hanging bridge of Kurez but it was still a little distance away from us. We spent some time there enjoying the river view and then decided to come back. The sun was already making us feel warm. Suddenly as if there was a sharp contrast between the temperature we felt even 15 minutes back. We had to shed a few of our warm clothes on the way back. The walk back to the hotel was even more picturesque because now the sun was shining brightly and the entire landscape looked even more vibrant. You can also notice that a few places they had solar panels attached to the street lamps which made perfect sense. The sun was so strong here that the solar panels ideally should be go to option here for an eco-friendly way to get electricity. Just have a look at this stunning visuals around. Do you think that you really need to go to Switzerland to enjoy such views? Absolutely not. This is our own country and this is how beautiful it is. It can give Switzerland a run for its money any day. I would conclude this part here itself. But stay tuned for the next part. Next we are heading off to explore the local sightseeing areas around Gurez and it's going to be a very very scenic and exciting journey. So stay tuned.